For this video lesson, I'd like to go through the facing operation in Autodesk's CAM package. The facing operation is the process of actually cleaning up or completely flattening off your top face. And this red face right now is my top face. So as I've modeled it right now, side to side is actually my X, this is my Y up and down, and then this one is my Z. When I come into the CAM tab, I'm going to click Tool Isometric. And if I've drawn the part in that specific orientation, then it should lay it down as if it's laying inside the machine. So my X is still side to side. My Y is now in and out from the front of the machine to the back of the machine. And then up and down is now my Z. So the first thing I want to do is go ahead and set up my origin and the stock that I'm going to use. So I'm going to come to the Setup tab. And the first thing I want to do is actually shift this work coordinate system from the default, which is on the top in the middle of it, over to this front, top, left corner. And it really can be anywhere that you want to try to locate it inside your machine. But for this example, this is where we're going to put it. Everything else on this tab can be left blank. So stock box point was the default. It just happened to be the middle, and I just shifted it over to this corner for now. All right. Next, we're going to come over to the stock tab itself. I do want to go ahead and add some extra material that I'm going to face off or clean up, but I don't need any on the sides for this example. So for my top offset, I'm going to leave the default 40 thousandths of an inch. Then I'm going to go ahead and erase the side offset. And go ahead and select OK. So I've now taught it where my work coordinate system is, so I can locate that inside the machine. And I've told it to add some extra material that I'm going to go ahead and clean off. All right, so we're now ready for the facing operation. So I'm going to come up to the 2D milling and select Face. Once I do that, the first thing for almost all of the operations is to select a tool. So I've already got a library set up. I'm going to come to Tool, select my library, and these are all the tools that I currently have to pick from. When I'm doing a facing operation, I typically want to pick the largest tool that I have. So not only can I do it in the fewest amount of steps, but I also have the fewest amount of passes on the top of it that's going to try to keep it as flat as it can possibly be. So I would either choose right now my half inch flat or my three quarter inch flat. And since this is the largest tool that I have and I can do it in the fewest amount of steps, that should make it as flat as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and pick tool nine and hit select. And for this activity, we're going to leave all the speeds and feeds alone. These are all numbers that we've got pre-built into it that are for prototyping materials. Waxes, butterboard, prototype, rin shape, those types of things. These materials, these numbers work fairly decent. Okay, so we're going to come to our next tab, which is the geometry tab. For facing, I typically don't have to do anything. It has interpreted the stock correctly, and it thinks that that's what I want to clean off. It's not going to stay inside that border. Um, it's just to find that as the border to try to machine. The next tab we're going to come to is our heights tab. And the only two that I typically look at when I'm doing facing are the last two. So the stock top actually is the top height that I want, and the model top is the bottom height. And again, those are the defaults. So the majority of the time, there's nothing to do with either one of those. That is what I wanted to do. I want my facing operation to start at the stock top and machine until it gets to the model top. All of that has to do with the fourth tab when I come into passes. So it has to do with whether I'm going to go all the way down in one step or I'm going to do multiple depths. And for the amount that I'm taking off right now and the size of the tool that I have, we can leave that alone. All right, so is there anything else in the tab that I typically mess with? Yes, it's for the step over. So if I hover over this right now, you may be wondering where did this point seven one two five come from? Well, if I hover over and look at the very bottom, it says flat tools equal diameter times 95%. So we have a step over or a pass overlap right now for 95%. So I've only got a 5% overlap in between them. I like to have just a little bit more than that. So I'm going to right click in my step over and I'm going to go to edit expression. Anytime you see some kind of formula here, then that means there's actually an expression that's driving the value that's in that box. So it's not just an odd number. It happens to be 95% of my 0.75 or the tool that you picked. 
So I'm going to erase that 0.95, or just the 0.05, and I'm going to make it 90%. And that way I've got a 10% overlap rather than just a 5%. And that's a personal preference. Both ways is the directions that I'm going to choose. I'll either choose both ways, or if I really want it to be nice and smooth, I'll choose climb only. It's just a lot more time consuming to choose climb rather than going uh, forwards and backwards with both ways. But we'll get more into that later. So that's all I really needed to do on this tab, was I wanted to change my step over from 95% to 90%. On this last tab, my linking tab, I can typically leave most of that alone. We're just going to go ahead and hit OK. Alright, so you can see right now that the tool is actually dropping down on this red cone. It rolls into the part, cuts all the way across it, then steps over, and I have a 10% overlap. Then it's going to come around again and then back up. And the green little arrow is where it actually leaves the part. So let's go ahead and simulate it. So I always come up here and actually click on the setup itself. Um, if not, when you do your simulation, it only simulate one operation at a time. And right now I only have one operation. So to give me the same results, um, just get in the habit of actually simulating it from the setup. So I'll go ahead and click on Simulate, and then once I do, I want my stock to be turned on, but I don't want my part comparison on. So I'm going to turn that off so it shows it as a green part. Okay, then all we have to do left is to hit Play. Awesome, but as I simulated that, you may have saw that there's not really that much material left over on this far side. So I'm actually going to rotate it, and we're going to watch it machine again, but I really want to focus on that last pass on how much material is left on this edge. And as I pause it, you can see because I changed it from 95% to 90%, I'm really close to this outside edge. So is there anything I can do to try to get that to add just a little bit more? Because it's barely hanging over there. And it may actually leave me a small sliver worth of material, depending on how perfect my part is from side to side. Especially since I changed it again from the 95% to 90%. If I close and double click it, I can come back in and change any of the settings that I want. The fourth tab is holding what I need. It's either this pass extension or the stock offset. With the stock offset right now, all I'm going to do is bump up the stock just a little bit. So I'm going to lie to it and tell it that it has an additional eighth of an inch all the way around. And say OK. There's actually no material out there, but it should then shift where each one of these passes are. And you can see that I now looks like we have an additional pass. So I go to simulate and we go to play that. And now it's taking a little bit less of a bite on that first pass. Still doing a 90% step over for all the internal passes. And then gives me a lot more hangover for that last step. So yes, it does add an additional pass to it, um, but it gives me a lot better results in the end. And that's really all there is to the facing operation. I have to go into my setup, decide where my origin is going to be, decide what size stock I have into relationship of what I've drawn, and come into the facing operation. I choose the tool that I want. I make sure that it's picked the right selection or contours. I make sure that the height and the bottom height are what I want them to be. Decide what type of step over I want and if I need it to add additional passes. And that's about it. So hopefully you now have the knowledge to be able to go ahead and do the facing operation that you need to.